FM's Dublin Talks, weekdays from 10 a.m. Paddy Fitzpatrick is a man that some of you may know uh, for playing a role in uh, Fair City a couple of years ago. Um, this man put our uh, next caller through hell and last week received a one month prison sentence for the violence that he inflicted uh, upon this um, lady. And she's extremely uh, brave for speaking out and coming forward uh, to talk about the abuse that um, that she suffered at his uh, hands. And I'm joined on the line now by um, the victim of, uh, of this monster's uh, abuse. Her name is uh, Sarah. Sarah, welcome to 98FM. Tell me firstly, if you will, why you decided to uh, to go public? Um, well, I think, first of all, I kind of want to desensitise the issue around domestic violence. And hopefully the more it's talked about um, going forward, maybe the judicial system will have to look at these, like to look at the leniency on the, the sentences for domestic violence and the likes, you know? Okay, now your, your case centres on... An assault that you suffered at the hands of a guy called Patrick Fitzpatrick, um, who played Zumo in Fair City. People may remember him from that. Um, tell me about your relationship from the start. What was the relationship like at the beginning? Um, well, he was... I was madly in love with him. We had a great relationship at the start. Um, it wasn't really long, taking a turn. I turned a blind eye to a lot of stuff. Um, like, like what? He had a lot. He had a lot of anger issues. You know, to be a lot of outbursts, and he had a. He was getting treatment for alcohol addictions at the time. You know, so um, I kind of was trying to be as understanding as I could for things like that. You know, mm. um, I suppose I did turn a blind eye for outbursts and rows and things, and he'd fly off the handle very easily. You know. So tell me about the, the the day that he exploded and you were uh, beaten very badly. Um, well, we were in the local pub for the All Ireland uh, All Ireland final, and um, one of my ex boyfriends was there. Um, I wasn't with him long, but I introduced him to to Paddy, and Paddy seemed to be fine with him. He, you know, I was holding his hand the whole time. The other guy was sitting across the table. I didn't see any issues whatsoever. He he dealt with the situation fine. And then about half an hour to an hour later, we went home and he all the way home, he was fine. He it appeared there was no issues whatsoever. As soon as I got in the door, he just pinned me up against the wall by my throat and just lashed out. And that was it. And what? So, what was he saying? Was he? Did he mention the encounter with the ex-boyfriend? Or yeah, he he was convinced something was going on between us. He asked me what was going on. He asked for my phone. He wanted to go through it all. He was just paranoid. So he pins you uh, up against the wall, and uh, he then he what did he do after that? Um, he proceeded to choke me, and then he was hitting me, and then he was trying to get my son away from me. He was trying to put him into his room and um, he was trying to keep us apart basically and he locked me into one room, he locked my son into another room and was then trying to get him offside so that he could deal with me. It was it was it was pretty horrific, you know. And this all witnessed by your then five year old son? Yeah. And I understand since then the effect on your uh, your little boy, who's now seven, is uh, quite severe. Yeah, definitely. He suffers really badly with anxiety. Because of what he witnessed that day? Yeah, he still talks about it all the time. Does he really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you were literally faced... This, this attack was so severe that you contemplated jumping out of the window um, for um, your own protection. Uh, but you did have help from uh, a neighbour, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I ran to the top story window. I live in an apartment, and um, a lot of the neighbours kind of heard the commotion and came running mm -hmm. out. And luckily, they were able to ring the guards a couple of times, and thankfully, they did arrive quite quickly. Um, but I did contemplate jumping out the top story window because I thought my chances of survival if I jump out that window and hit the deck is better than if I stay in this house because I was full sure he was going to kill me, and that was it. 
he did subsequently say to me afterwards, I'm so glad they did come to help because I was not going to stop. I wasn't out to hurt you. I was out to actually kill you. Oh, my God. So you eventually got away from him. Um, he was subsequently charged with that assault. But this is the, the key to this whole story. Last week, he was sentenced to just one month. Yeah. How did it's you feel about that? Yeah, I I mean, it was kind of good in one way to get closure and hopefully put it all behind me. But it is, it is very... Very lenient, like you know. He was sentenced to one month in prison last Wednesday for uh, for this attack. I mean, I, you say on the one hand it's closure because at least he's been sentenced with something, but it seems bizarre that he received such a lenient sentence. Um, particularly bearing in mind that this isn't the first time he um, attacked a woman or assaulted a woman. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I. Thankfully, my story has been very positively received online and nationwide. But one comment that I did see was that, uh, which I hadn't seen this angle, I hadn't thought of this angle. One person said that uh, the fact the sentence was so short, possibly there's more to this story than we know. And that kind of got to me. I was like, wow, people might actually think that there's more to this. And there isn't. Like, I never even fought back. I never hit him back. I shamefully never defended myself. I just curled up into a ball and, you know, there is no more to this story. I didn't, you know, they thought that maybe the judge had taken that into account, but there was more to it, but I, I didn't. There was nothing else, you know. And like we, like I was saying, with a, a one-month sentence, it sends out the completely wrong message for uh, women, or men for that matter, who were in abusive relationships like this. That's, that's my worry. That's my worry, Adrian. Definitely. In terms of, of uh, this guy, and your, I assume your relationship ended there and then, um, have you had any contact with him since? Um, well, it was over two years ago, and mm. so literally after that there were a couple of text message exchanges. I mean, I, was, I thought this guy was the love of my life, you know, so I found it very hard to let go, and I was manipulated for a long, long time by him in the relationship, and I did kind of feel sorry for him afterwards. I think I was kind of blindsided, you know. Uh, in the last while, there has been absolutely no contact with her. No, thankfully with counselling and stuff, I've I've come come a long way, you know. Okay, so his sentence last week, albeit short, is at least uh, a sentence, and he has been punished by um, by the courts. Do you worry about him being released? Do you worry about him uh, coming back into your life at all, or are you are, are you happy that that chapter is now closed? Um, well, yeah, I'm definitely worried about when he's released. Um, I know that he's been ordered to stay away from the property from myself and no contact directly or indirectly, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. What do you want to say to women who are in a relationship like that, um, who are suffering at the hands of a man or a man who's suffering at the hands of a woman? What's your message to people like that? And it's one of the reasons that you've spoken out. Um, Don't feel trapped. Get out reach out to somebody that you know. People are very understanding. Like, even if it's not on a professional level, women's aid are fantastic. They're so amazing. It's all confidential. You can call them. They'll help you to put certain things in place to get out. Um, you know, just reach out to a friend. You can. There's always ways out. Even if you have kids, there's, there's women's refuges. They're, they're fantastic here. There's one in Blanchetown. And there's always ways out. Just try and get out as best you can, you know? All right. And obviously you're calling for harsher pun- punishment and sentences for uh, domestic abusers uh, like the guy who beat you so badly. Yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, sir. Well, I appreciate you uh, speaking to us and speaking publicly, and I think it is important uh, that, you know, people listening in that sort of situation realise they're not alone, that uh, other people are in identical relationships and they just need the, the strength to, to get out. Yeah, I've had it... Uh, phenomenal amount of contact from women that I know and women that I don't on Facebook messaging me and asking for advice and you know people you think to be in these model relationships and you don't realise what's mm. going on behind closed, closed doors you know so Well look I wish you well Sarah and I, I wish your uh, your little boy well as well I hope that in time he'll be able to, to put that in the past for him as well because I, I do understand that it has had a fairly devastating effect on him to witness his mammy being beaten like that Sarah thanks yeah. very much indeed for talking to us on 98FM Thank you so much Adrian Colette you're on 98FM Hi Colette 
Hi, yeah, how you doing? Can I, is it fair to say that once somebody does something like this once, they're a- a- always capable of doing it? Yeah, once abused or always abused. Leprous doesn't change, that's spots at all. And there should be a, a mandate where it, it should be registered for a, be, being abused. As we, uh, as we know, um, if you are a sex offender, you go on the sex offenders register. Um, you think the same sort of thing should apply to somebody? Should apply to um, to an abuser as well. They're not going to stop. They're, they're like being controlled. But the gas party don't stand up to a man. They'll only do it to a woman. Mm. Well, then again, there is a few women that abuses men too. No, I know that. And in fact, you just heard that message I read out from a guy talking about his ex-wife. Swinging an axe around the house. Um, yeah. uh, okay, so as far as you're concerned, uh, so well, my who- sister was in an abusive ra- relationship, and Jesus, she used to get her head beaten off with even with holding the baby in the arms. He used to beat the shit over. Really? And how long did she stay in that relationship? Oh, she stayed in it for years and years until the um, until the social worker told her either he goes or the children be taken off her. Just a flirt. Hmm. And she got rid of him, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's one of those things people often wonder how somebody can stay in a relationship like that. But like you said, she was just too, um, it's too afraid. It's a controlling team. They just bring you down, bring you down, and then they tell you that you're not worth it. Nobody wants you. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. You just, somebody keeps telling you that all the time. That's how you feel. As a matter of interest, um, now obviously don't name names. Where is he gone? And um, what's he up to now? Is he in oh, a... he's still floating around, still doing the same thing to other girls as well. That's what I was about to ask, yeah. Yeah, still be locked up and put away. And uh, did she ever get him charged? Um, no, she just no. walked away from him. She walked away. Yeah, you see, unfortunately, that's leaving him free then to go off and do it again, which you, you say he has. Mind you, when I hear uh, that Lady Sarah story, uh, the guy who beat her got a one-month sentence. and yeah, it's not, um, not tough with him. Yeah, and previously he got a suspended sentence for a different uh, assault. All right, stay there for one second, Kales. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program. Oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Should we have a register of domestic abusers if somebody is convicted like this guy? Um, is convicted by the courts, even if it is only for a one one sentence, he still has a criminal record now. Uh, should everybody know? In other words, when you get into a relationship with somebody, should you be able to type in their name onto a database and find out if that person's ever been convicted of a crime like that? 67979081 is our telephone number. Or maybe you're somebody who believes that, yeah, you might have done something like that once, but you can um, get help, you can stop, and you don't necessarily have to be an abuser over and over again. Although I think a lot of people believe once you do it once, you're capable of doing it again and again. Shane, you're on 98FM. How are you, Shane? Not too bad. Just a bit disgusting to hear that your man only got one month. One month, yep. Yeah. One month. It's a disgrace. You should have got a lead minimum of five years. Because I think you should have got done for false imprisonment as well and trying to uh, lock the child up in the room as well. Mm. Yeah, and he should have. He, he, I mean, it just... Yeah. When you hear uh, Sarah describe how this has impacted on her young fella, uh, it's... God yeah, love he's, he's not the only one to get away with it as well. Mm. If you remember, there was a story on Facebook there that girl put up about uh, her fella who beat her up in front of the gym and all that. Yes. And he got away with something similar as well. It's not, it's just, <clears throat> I, I don't know what it is about all women or not, but uh, I had a friend who went through it as well, and her fella was, he was, he was an asshole, like, but, like, she, no matter what he did, she always went back to him. Mm. And he used to always hit her and whatever, like, but what I understand is that he treated her like, which kept him going back but then when she got with a fella who treated her well she didn't want to know yeah I know it does it does defy logic sometimes yeah but it just I think I think that's a great idea for making a register for, for both male and female yeah no obviously not obviously only, not, not yeah obviously not just men yeah because there's lads out there that won't stand up and say listen I'm in and it might it might be a physical abuse for a relationship either Loads of people do it mentally as well. We're telling people that you're not good, no one wants you. Like, look at the state and all that. And, like, it puts people down to the point where no matter what they do, no matter how they dress, they still feel ugly inside and outside. It's a hard thing to deal with, like. Yeah, I mean, uh, and like I said, when you hear 
of a sentence like uh, that handed down last week, one month in prison. Well, he, and he won't even serve the one month. No, 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 he'll probably be out next week. Yeah, he'll probably go in, he'll probably spend two or three days in there. And then you get longer for not paying your TV licence. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, she decided to speak publicly because she was so... Uh, shocked by the, the conviction one month um, and he had a previous suspended sentence from the last conviction um, which was for uh, 12, 12 months but he but is that not yeah, is that, that not the judge is that not the judge telling all the tow rags out there that are doing it go ahead and do it you're going to get away with it anyway mm. Big time, it's yeah, absolutely. Real, like. It's shocking, it is. Stay there for I a second. Fra Frank, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Frank? Ah, uh, I tell you, I think, I definitely, you see, Adrian, when you say about a register, yes, or some sort of system, in this country, Adrian, that doesn't work. Why? We already have what's called a sex offenders register. However, the only people privy to that is the Gardaí pull system that me and you aren't privy to. Correct. And unfortunately, if there is a register, it'll be only privy to the eyes of legal people, i.e. Gardaí and legal teams. Other than that, it means nothing. Now, when it comes to that girl there, it's absolutely shocking. There's a man currently, again, I said it before to you, currently locked up at the pleasure of this state there for 18 months for not paying tax a GP when he could be out there saving people's lives. Mm. However, now... I'm sure that individual that girl was talking about, if, I don't know the guy, I don't even know anything about him, but I'm sure if people get on to you there that know him growing up, you'll find he was always like that. He was always a bully, I'd say. Always a violent tug. That's all they are, like, let's face it, they're tugs. Now, there's a weighing scales, Adrian, if you look at the symbol of law, there's a weighing scales, yeah? Yep. Ireland must have the most lopsided weighing scales in the world. Because everything in this country, and I mean this, and I want people to correct me on this, everything in this state at the minute is tilted in favour of the accused or the guilty. The and certainly when, you, when you listen to this guy's uh, track record, he assaulted two different women in two different relationships, and he will do a couple of days in prison. For uh, for both of them, there should be a tariff, Adrian. I said to you there before about either domestic violence, violence, antisocial behaviour, three strikes. There should be a tariff as well going up in the in the ranks. The guy done it before. That's four strike. He gets so long on a tariff. This time it's second strike. So he goes up another level. And third strike, then like the Yanks, keep him in jail for nearly thirty years. And another thing, Adrian, whether the individual is walking or collecting the dole. That girl or the victim should be getting most of that money on a weekly basis given to her as compensation or run them out of the country. Like, it's, 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 gone, it's gone now beyond, I have a daughter, Adrian, and my nerves are gone from when she gets older. Yeah, no, and, and, I, I think week, it is Adrian, most parents' biggest fear. Yeah, only last week, Adrian, in this country, we had the legal people meeting, you probably heard it, about rape cases in this country. Mm. And they want to make it, in my opinion, and I hope it's the people, most people, right thinking people, to believe, that they want to make it easier now for a rapist. Because in his twisted mind, he can say to the judge, I'm nearly positive she said, yeah, go ahead. She consented to this. Do you understand where we're going with this? So what would, uh, I mean, what can be done about somebody uh, like this guy? He's already... Locked them up, we need to lock them up, Adrian, or tag them. You see, that's what's wrong. We need to tag individuals in this country, like paedophiles, sex offenders, uh, which he's not. But I mean, he's a, he's a beater up, he goes around beating people up. I mean, only two weeks ago there, three weeks ago, you had a guy, well, I'll just give you a quick one before I go. You had a guy there. That abducted a girl, more or less, from O'Connell Street. Mm -hmm. Led her down the road to an abandoned feckin' industrial unit. Raped her over a two and a half day or two day period. You just know the case I'm on about, I do, yeah? yeah? Now, that individual was found guilty by his peers. He's out now. I want people to listen to this. And fathers and mothers and daughters and women walking the streets. He's out today on continuous bail till October. So he has two full months to enjoy walking the streets and probably do it again because there's something wrong with the guy. Allegedly. Allegedly, you see, yeah. There we go. There's that doctor locked up. He wasn't given continuous bail, was he, for not paying his tax? All right, stay there for one second, Frank. Let me read a message that's just come in and it says, 
I agree with that previous message. I was abused at 16 by my partner. We're both women. It uh, was never taken seriously by the guards, and they told me that I had to press, char- uh, it had to be the one to press charges. But at 16, and still in the same school together, I was hardly going to do that. Nobody ever took it seriously, only my closest friends and uh, family. But people definitely turned a blind eye to it because we were both women. It was something I got over with help from my family, but it's something that really hurts my heart how it wasn't taken seriously by anyone else. I was in hospital for two months and weighed only six stone. Abusers have more than likely been abused themselves. It's a vicious cycle and without help will um, always uh, continue. Um, and th- this lady is on the phone. I'm, uh, I'm going to call her um, Katie, just to protect her identity. Uh, Katie, welcome to 98FM. Hi, how are you? That sounds horrific. Yeah, <laughs> it was. So you were only a young one. You were 16. Yeah. Um, uh, you were in a relationship with this other girl, and sh- what used she do to you? Um, what didn't she do? Everything, really. Absolutely everything. Like, um, like what? Give me an example of, of, of a bad day with her. Um, well, it, only, it actually started far into the relationship. Like, I was with her for nine months before anything happened. But she, it started off mentally, so she'd isolate me. Um, sorry, I ran down the stairs. No, no, you're doing, you, you're doing well. Um, yeah, so it started mentally, so she'd isolate me from my family and friends, you know, kind of make me spend all my time with her, telling me, you know, that they don't want to see me. And when I was growing up, I remember being like, you know, I'd never let anyone treat me like that. I would never allow someone to... Uh, to to, to, like I, I didn't understand because I was raised like you know quite strong like a strong woman but I could never understand how people just couldn't go and get help mm. for it, like you know or, or say it to their mom or say it to their friend and then um, but, but, but what they do is they get you mentally first so they get you to they isolate you and they make you feel like you depend on them and then I remember the first night uh, we were at a party with my friends and bear in mind I'm only 16 and we're walking home, she threw a fit over something. And we're walking home, and next thing she just grabbed my phone off me and was trying to push me out into the middle of the road. And then um, she got me out of the wall and bet the fucking shit out of me, excuse my French. And then um, the next morning, I remember waking up and I, I remember seeing all these cuts on me and bruises, and I was just like, oh my God. And then she was full of apologies. I'd never do that again. I'm so, so sorry. And I was like, yeah, look, it's fine. And then that's where it started, like, because I covered it up. I never told anyone I'd wear my scarf over my neck. And then um, this went on for months. I didn't I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell my friends. And um, and then I think it just started to, it, people started to cop that I just wasn't being myself. I lost a lot of weight. And then um, the final night, the final day was because I stood up for myself over, we were having an argument over something. And then she threatened to kill me. And then I actually ended up having to run into her mom. And I asked her mom, would she drop me home? And her mom said, yeah, no problem. And when we got into the car, she chased us down the road, got onto the bonnet of the car, ripped off the window wiper and tried to get in at me. My it God. Really, yeah, it was really like, and, and, and you know what? Like, I, I, the thing about it is I didn't realize until I was in a hospital bed. I weighed six stone. I had to get my appendix out because I think I just kept in everything. It made my gut sick. And it was then, it was only then, did I realise, oh my God, I was in an abusive relationship. Like, mm. it still didn't stick with me. At and 16? Then, at 16, <laughs> yeah, at 16. And I thought, oh my God, how has this happened? Like, this is exactly what I always said growing up that would never happen to me. And um, and I, and, and the thing people forget is they think just as soon as you're, you, you break up or, you know, you get they get caught or whatever, that you're all of a sudden going to hate them. But they still have you manipulated. Hmm. You know, they still have you in a low place. And in fact, and, uh, uh, listening to Sarah's conversation um, a while ago, she said exactly that. For a period of time after the assault, she almost felt sorry for him. Yeah, no, absolutely you do, because they have opened up to you about their problems. And obviously, and I really do stand by it, no one is ever going to hit you unless they, they've been through something. You know, they, nobody... not. And was that the case with this girl that you were talking about? Yeah. It was, it was. She had gone through something very similar, worse if even, and 
but it's no excuse but you, it make, you kind of understand and you feel sorry for them because you feel love for them they obviously mm. don't feel love for you they feel obsession but you know you love them you don't want to see them you're hurt and you want justice but you also don't want to see them hurt do you know what I mean and, it, and it's an awful cycle but nobody nobody took my case seriously like when my friends found out our mutual friends they thought oh me it's just being dramatic you know stuff like that and and, and you know and let me ask you this this person that you were in the relationship with uh, how long ago were we talking about um, I'm 23 now so okay so seven five. eight years ago yeah um and what has she gone on to do? And is she in a relationship or, or do you know anything about her now? Yeah, as far as I know, she was in a relationship and uh, look, I, I hear it's healthy, nothing's gone on. I, like, I know she, I'm very actually where she got a lot of help for. It was ironic because, you know, obviously afterwards I had a lot of follow-ups with doctors. They were worried about me and, and, and they wanted to send me to a psychiatrist. But it took two years to get an appointment. And um, I remember going into the appointment uh, on the day it got cancelled and then got rearranged and the day I walked in didn't she have an appointment for oh my god <laughs> for the psychiatrist as well the irony um, but like two years it took to get a psychiatric appointment or whatever they wanted for me they, they didn't take it seriously I remember going to one counsellor and, and she was like oh my god like I think you're just being a bit dramatic as a matter of interest just going back to when you were 16 yeah. Would your parents not have had a clue? Would uh, people, you know, family and friends not have had a clue? I am extremely close with my mum, extremely close with my friends. Um, and I was just very, very good at hiding it. Very good. And, and that's the scary thing. Mm. You think you can know your best friend. You think you can know your daughter. It's not their fault. They literally had no clue because I was such an expert at hiding it because you're so protective over them. Um, you don't want people to think that they're a bad person. And so you're, you just get very, very quick. You no described one. how you ended up in the hospital um, and so on. How are you now? How are you today? Good. Um, it took years of building up my confidence again. Um, that definitely was m- more... I, I feel the mental abuse is harder and the emotional abuse is harder to get over than the, the physical. Absolutely, I'd rather the physical any day. Um, and I'm in a relationship the last four years with my partner. Uh, it's very healthy. I knew that I realized very quickly that it's a cycle. And if I didn't get Kreft help quickly, I was going to. I It would, could be, very well be a possibility that I could do that to someone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I had to get the help very quickly. But now I have um, a very healthy relationship. And That's I'm great. I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah. Do you think we should have a register for people convicted of domestic abuse? I don't think that's gonna. No, I don't think that's gonna stop anything. I think it needs to, that. What we need to focus on is the help afterwards. Do you know what I mean? The help for the victims and the help for the abusers. I think you know, someone looking up something before they date someone isn't gonna change anything. I really don't think that's gonna work. It's the help we need afterwards. Um, you know, I, I, I've. And this was the point you made in your message that it's a vicious cycle, and without help, it will uh, continue. So. Yeah. It will always continue. So Some people, though, believe once an abuser, always an abuser, that uh, that they can't be helped. Well, look, if they get correct help and they work on it themselves, who who are we to say? I'm sure there's cases out there where they never abused again. So I don't think I think that's a big big statement to say. Um, but without help, you know, they probably more than likely will do it again. Oh, good to mm-hmm. talk to you, Katie. Glad to hear that things have uh, have picked up in your life. Um, yeah. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. And just finally, uh, I just want to go to a, another call just very quickly. Um, and we are we are deliberately um, v- putting this lady's voice through our voice disguise uh, system and uh, changing her name. Uh, Anna, you're on 98FM. Hi, Anna. Hi, Adrian. Now, um, uh, I just want to say that um, and one, uh, that is true. Once an abuser is always an abuser. Because I was in a relationship for about, I'd say nearly about a year. And then um, seven months, he wasn't just physically abusing me or mentally, it was physical, it was um, verbal as well. Mm-hmm. And he used to call me every name. I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I wasn't even getting, I wasn't even washing myself. It got to that stage where I wasn't able to look nice going out to him. Right. Like, literally, he'd call And me long, how long me. did this go on for? Seven months in a relationship. Why did you let it go on seven months? I don't know. Like, he just had me brainwashed. And that was the thing. Like, he had me literally brainwashed. And I wasn't able to... 
I, it got to the stage where I wasn't actually able to see me friends or see me family. I had to go to him constantly. And what's, what made you, what was the final straw? What made you get out? Um, well, the, t- the final straw that made me get out was one day we came back from a trip that I was on with him. And um, he ended up hitting me when we were on the trip. And I rang my mom and said it wasn't him, it wasn't him. Mm. He t- took my phone off me and smashed his phone on the ground. And um, I went over to the shop to get a drink. Well, the drink was on the sill. So I, cause I, I, hadn't, I hadn't got any money because that, that, was, that was one of the things as well. He took the money off me when I used to, when I used to get paid for, for working. He used to take the money off me and spend it on himself. I had no money to get back home, so I asked him for bus fare. And he thought that I was just being... A snake basically going around and getting drink when it, when, I, when I didn't have any money with me. Mm. So I took the drink off the window and I threw it at him and he ended up get like he can make himself get sick. So he ended up getting sick in my face. Jesus. And that's not just the one thing he done. Like when when he ended up um, hitting me, he hit me in the arm and he kicked me in the chest and stomach and he was going to stick me face to talk cooker. You eventually got away from him. Yeah. Was he ever charged? No. What did he go on to do then subsequently? Did he get into a new relationship or do you know anything yeah, about got, him? Yeah, he got into a new relationship and um, he got a girl pregnant. Right. But you don't know I, if that's an abusive relationship or not? I don't know. The, the reason I'm asking these concept. questions is because it, m- my worry is, and it always has been, that if somebody abuses somebody and they don't get charged or they don't get convicted, um, they just go on to do it again and again and again, anonymously, because they never even appeared in court. Yeah. But I just I just don't know what the situation is with that girl, because I, 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 I know I'm not saying it for, to, for like, I don't care about or anything. It's just I couldn't care what he does. I know it's bad, like, that what he does. But I just don't want to have any contact with him because of what he put me through. Hmm. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Lee, for sharing your story with us. Uh, let me read out one final message. We were asking a couple of minutes ago, you know, once an abuser, always an abuser. My partner slapped me across the face. I slapped her back twice as hard. That was 20 years ago. And we have never, ever struck each other again. We're still together, says Paul. Um, and Adrian, thanks to the liberal agendas, all scum on the planet have rights and can have a bad day. Well, sorry, no. Tag these, um, and as it's a small price to pay for, uh, freedom. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10am.